So, we're going to talk just briefly about Payday 2. Because we're both excited for it. Oh, yeah. Switch. Uh, but instead of talking about our excitement for it for Switch, we're talking about a little story that's happening. Because, hey, this podcast is on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. We just hit 21,000 subscribers. Thanks. Awesome. Heck Good job, yeah. guys. Um, and they are doing something that I don't. I think this might be the first it's ever happened. So YouTube is, is going through this transitional phase where they are changing up the revenue streams. And they've implemented some new AI that's taking a while to learn. And a bunch of big popular channels are being hit financially really, really hard. Um, and H3, H3 Productions, which is a fairly big YouTube channel, is getting hit pretty hard by that. So that just sets us up a little bit because they're not making as much money as they used to. Um, and in fact, they're making so little that they've like even thought about leaving YouTube entirely. Because it's ruining their livelihood. They might be one of those YouTubers that literally, they need that money coming in every month or they're screwed. Yeah. YouTube money comes in on a net 30 cycle. I know this because I run a YouTube channel. So every 30 days you get paid and if you know they're not making enough money now, it means their next paycheck is going to be small. Now, right. they wouldn't be in such financial trouble, however, if it wasn't for a lawsuit they have going on. And this lawsuit had to do over a parody video that they made. Of someone else's work, because like what 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 H three H three Productions does, they're a comedy channel basically. They have some discussions, but they're basically a comedy channel. They they spoof and parody and make fun of things. Um, and there's a video that they made fun of and spoofed, and the guy got pretty upset about it, basically saying, "Oh, you plagiarized my entire work." Which, no, it yeah, was, no, it was, it was all yeah. satire comedy, anyways, and came after him hard. And originally, when they were fighting this lawsuit, first they kind of dismissed it, but then they had a lawyer that was working pro bono. And now um, the, the case got kind of serious, and so they had to up, up it to you know a more professional lawyer. And literally, within a month, that lawyer fees were like $50,000. So right. if people want to know yeah. what it costs to have a really damn good lawyer, it's expensive. $50,000 just for a month of work. And they have months and months more work ahead of them. Um, and Philip DeFranco, another popular YouTuber, he... He already raised like 170000 for them through a GoFundMe mm -hmm. um, to, to help pay the fees because the, re the reason that he and maybe some other YouTubers have kind of stood up for H3 History isn't just because they like him. It's because this lawsuit is about free speech on YouTube. It's, yeah. uh, it, it's, a, it's yeah, about definitely. the ability to create content that can be critical and comedic and satire-like. Um, without another company being able to shut yourself down. Like, it's one thing for companies like Nintendo to do their copyright claim and take all the money from it. This guy is shutting it down and then coming after them for, like, legally for money. Yeah. And uh, it's, it, it's a, a fight that ultimately, no matter what the result is, probably won't affect most YouTubers, but it's a fight that a lot of YouTubers well, feel it, like... It we possibly support, could. It, it could, but it probably won't. It, 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 I mean, if you look at the video that guy was in question, they did have a lot of clips from the original video, and that's kind of where the argument stems from. Like, oh, if you add all those clips together, it's almost my entire video. It's like, yeah, but you you can't just ignore the stuff in between. Right. Um, that makes it not your original video. But because that's what they do sometimes. Sometimes they'll take a whole video and they'll chop it up and do like reactions and funny bits to it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, where yeah, it ends up where the whole video is there, but. It's split up over, you know, it, it was a five-minute video, and it got split up over, like, 20 minutes as they're yeah, making yeah. fun of it and doing the right. little skits and whatever. Basically, I have a feeling if, that, if this was a review of that thing and it was all positive, I think yeah, well, right, 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 happened. exactly, yeah. Um, but this could almost set a precedence. It that, could, it that, could. You know, if but YouTube's other people not involved doing in this. the lawsuit itself. So, like, this is outside of YouTube's scope, uh, which is why I don't think YouTubers in general will be affected um, but it, it is still something we want to happen. So well, how this has to do with Payday 2 is these legal fees are expensive. Atrium Industry Productions is making like significantly less money in YouTube now to the point that Philip Franco had to raise money to help them because they don't have the money to pay the lawyer. $50,000 right. is a lot of money. That's oh, more yeah. than most of us make in a year. Yeah. So it's like, that, that's, that's just insane. And that's what it is per month. Um, so what... Payday 2 developers are doing. They're releasing a $4.99 DLC pack that puts the two people from h 3 h Productions into the game. Um, they're doing, they're selling this on Steam, I think, right now. 
um, hopefully on Nintendo Switch when Payday 2 comes out, because I will gladly buy that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, don't even, I mean, I'm not even a huge fan of h 3 but I support what they are trying to do and trying to not back down and settle. They're trying to be like, no, we firmly believe we are legally within our right, and a case like this hasn't really gone this high up in the courts in a long time because most of the time it just gets settled outside of court. Yeah. Some money yep, payments definitely. somewhere yep. and everything's done. And they're not backing down, so you know I, I applaud it. Uh, the release of the Fortnite and the pack and Payday 2 is taking zero cut of that DLC pack. None of it. All the money goes straight to H3H3 H3 Productions to pay the legal fees. Um, great thing they're doing. That it ne- this never happens. You never see the game. Now, this is a unique situation where the game developers are coming out to support the very people that often are under attack by game developers. YouTubers in general are under attack by game developers. Oh, you're stealing footage. You're yeah. stealing this. Well, you're making all this money off this. I'm playing our game. We should be making money off of it. And here these people are like, dude, no, no. This is, yeah. You have the right to do what you're doing, and we want to support what you're doing. Right. And we're not going to pay your legal fees for you, but we will offer an ability for fans to get some content that's like cameo appearances of you in a game, and then... You know, all that money goes to you, so then, you know, it's not just people giving you money and go find me, they get something back in return. Right. Um, and again, I don't know how popular this is going to be. I don't know how big Payday 2 is right now on Steam. But this is just a very interesting stance that um, I like seeing happen. And the only way it can get bigger than this is obviously if a AAA developer decided to do this. Right. Uh, which... AAA developers tend to be a little more greedy than that, so I don't. Need, I, I don't right, see them right. ever being like, "Oh, hey, we'll do that and take none of the money from it." They might. We, take we half. made the characters, so yeah. yeah. No, they won't even do it. It's a charity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're, exactly. They're that's that's it. very true. They're too. not gonna. They're not gonna get involved in a court battle over stealing content. Yeah. Because they most AAA developers on the side think, "Yeah, well, you probably shouldn't just do that, and then you won't have to worry about it." Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. But anyways, it's just a very interesting thing I, I wanted to briefly mention because it's important. It is, it is important uh, what happens in this case, whether you think content creators such as myself should be using footage of games, should be using other people's footage to do things with, or if you feel like there's a certain line and it's been crossed. So if even if well, you want the ban hammer to come down, then you should be very interested in the outcome of this case. Right. If you believe in the right to free speech and the critiquing and the comedic effect and the satire of all this, then you really, you know, you now you have another way to support it if you didn't get in on that GoFundMe at the time it was running. Right. My, my thing is, is for the whole time of media, in order to review something, you got to show something from that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing. You, you can't just review something without actually showing sure. anything what you mean by it. Yes. And so this brings up a point. Because you can't, you you could just sit there and make up complete <laughs> BS, oh, yeah. and and not, you can't back it up with footage. Yeah. So there was this, this YouTube commenter. I won't I won't name his name specifically in case you know he wants to stay anonymous. But he commented on one of the videos recently because I made an off the cuff remark about how much I don't like the Nintendo Creators Program um, and how I had to delay a video five days. Um, and he made a response like, "Oh, I've made two Nintendo videos, and it took oh, four hours, not five days. So you're full of shit." And I'm like, "As I told him, that's good for you. That's not the case for everyone." Yeah. Like I could literally show you my upload date, and I can show you my back end of my Nintendo's Creator Program if you want, and I can show you the final day it was approved. Mm-hmm. Like I can show you my history. Yeah. Showing that it took fucking five days to get approved, and that's the third time it's happened. It's taken four days before and three days the other day. So like, I've never gotten four hour approval, and maybe yeah. it's because I'm making. I don't know. I guess I didn't watch this guy's videos. Maybe it was like a two-minute clip. Yeah, right, exactly. Whereas, yeah. like, my videos are 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes long. Yeah. Um, or, if the case of the podcast, hour, yeah. two hours long. And, yeah. and, you know, I purposely don't put Nintendo footage in our podcast because it's a weekly show. I can't have a week delay on a weekly show. Right, It's already right, bad exactly, enough that yeah. some of these, uh, you know, that we segment this. So, like, some the one we post on Friday might not be relevant anymore when we talked about it the Friday before. But... Imagine that I have to wait another week on top of that. Yeah. Oh, that would be terrible. Yeah, no. Um, so, you know, this commenter came at me, and you guys, if you've ever been on YouTube or you've seen people talk about people making money on YouTube, you've seen these comments, you know, a dime a dozen, how content creators don't have a right to make money off YouTube videos when they're showing other people's work, whether you know whether it's video game related or if they're critiquing someone's, like, movie or music or whatever. Um, or even if they're just doing a comedy sketch and having some of that music or some of that movie, you know, like a clip from that movie. Like if I, um, as an example, I, in one of my videos in the past, I put up a clip from SpongeBob one year later. Yeah, right. That's yeah. totally copyrighted and owned by Nickelodeon. They didn't come after me for it. Yeah. But they could have. Yeah. Legally, the precedent is there. I jacked one of their clips 
and used it in my video. And according to YouTube's policy, they can get my whole channel shut down if they wanted to. Yeah. Um, but there's a line where some people think you shouldn't be doing that, right? If you're creating, you know, as a, as they say, if you think you're so great, make 100% completely original content. And at what point in time does that become almost impossible? Well, I look at it like this. So do you go out to news organizations and tell them, hey, why don't you 100% of the time make 100% completely original content? That means they can't use any video clip they didn't record themselves. Right, exactly, ever. yeah. yeah. So they, they, they might talk about, oh, man, this uh, tornado hit so-and-so. We don't have any film for them, but we got some from a local news station. Nope. Well, guess what? Don't do that. Anybody can't like IGN them. or anything that yeah. wants to Literally, use, video game media would disappear. Yeah, you can't. It, w- it would disappear. You can't advertise because guess what? You didn't record that video. Yeah, and here's the thing: I am recording my own gameplay footage, but you're like, oh, but Nintendo owns that footage. It's like, what? Also, the fact I disagree with you because Nintendo isn't the one physically playing the game. They did create the assets. They did create the game itself. They already got my sixty bucks. Exactly. Right? They've already got their royalties and off. Everyone of it. else in the industry basically views this as free advertising. Right. Exactly. Because it's not. Like, you tried arguing that it was a licensing type deal, and I'm like, no. It's called product placement in advertising. You think when you watch the movie E.T. that uh, they paid Domino's Pizza to put Domino's Pizza in that movie? No. Domino's Pizza paid them to be in the movie. Right, exactly. It's advertising. It's and what placement. all of us yeah. on YouTube are doing are giving these games attention and advertising for free. And the thing is, these companies didn't have any problem with it until some of the attention was negative. Because ultimately, not everyone's going to love your products. Right. People are going to come out and not like, you know, there's people who don't like Breath of the Wild. That's just going to be the case. They're wrong, but I'm kidding. Well, I'm and kidding. it's tough knowing that yeah, Nintendo right, right, right. at the end of the day can shut down those videos if they want. Yeah, right. Um, they, no, no, to be fair to Nintendo, they haven't actually gone as far as to shut down videos. They've demonetized them, and then, like, you go through the creators program, and you can get it approved anyways. So Nintendo hasn't used their authority, you know, their authority to do it yet, but they have the ability to. Yeah. And this lawsuit and everything going on, this is all about um, the belief that we have the right to do this kind of stuff. And I firmly believe I have all the right in the world to put video game footage up on my videos. Because we're a video game channel that is attracting people to watch us because of video games. Just like I firmly believe that advertisers should not be pulling out of YouTube because some of their ads appear on offensive stuff. Ultimately, you're not being associated with that anyways, right? Like, say you pop up on a channel that's a Satanist channel, and you are, you know, you're ran by a Christian, you know, organization or whatever, and that a Christian, let's say it's Colgate as an example, and a Christian organization for some reason owns Colgate. Yeah. And there's a Colgate commercial that appears on a Satanist video. Trust me, no one's associating that Satanist video with Colgate. I don't know yeah, anybody. Right, yeah. Like, when I watch, when, when I watch an NFL game, Unless, unless the, the commercial itself is tailored says, to football. Oh, or says a sponsor of the NFL. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah right. And, yeah. and, you know, is it, is it clearly a thing playing off the fact that you're watching a football game? You know, when when I, when I the Nintendo Switch commercial popped up in the middle of the Super Bowl, that was I like, oh, man, Super Bowl and Nintendo Switch, they get together like, like yeah, you know, yeah, peanut right, butter yeah. and jelly. Yeah, right. Like, no, the, the Switch has nothing to do with the Super Bowl. It's just yeah. an ad spot that pays yeah. the bills at the company. Like, it's yeah. not... And that's the thing. These these advertisers pulling out, it's like, man, you just do not understand YouTube, do you? No. Well, and another thought that just popped in my head. What's, you know, so all these game companies are doing this. Why aren't, like, PC companies coming after people who are making money off their PCs? What's the difference? There is no difference. People are, are using PCs to make money. You know, why aren't the, the PC makers going, well, where's my cut? Where's this? Where's that? You know. Yeah. Does, here's the thing. Does everybody but the person who makes the thing get a cut? Yeah. Right. Like, how about the people that created? Like, I use Sony Vegas Pro for. Or I'm sorry, no, it's not Sony anymore. They sold it. I I do own a copy of Sony Vegas 13. I use uh, Vegas 14, and I've also uh, rented for like a, a couple months the Adobe Premiere. Do those companies because I'm doing all my editing in those videos on their pla- on their software? Do they should they get a cut? Because yeah. I'm using their programs how, that are built to do exactly what I'm doing. How does how does Redbox survive? I mean, these mic this microphone company. What is it? Uh, a Basque. Do they deserve a cut? Because I'm recording my audio with it. Or how about the people who made the cables and the stands? Right. That's that's what it's coming down to. Is yes, there is a difference because the podcast isn't about this microphone. Well, right. But, but at the same point, 
It's this a tool with it. Being there. I just said their name. That's advertising for right. them. I use these $30 Abask microphones. They're cheap as heck, but if you guys like the sound quality, guess what? You yeah. want to get into podcasting? Here's a cheap way to do it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it, it's one of those things that I just... When people act like this person did on YouTube and like people have acted towards HJH3 and the way this company is acting in this lawsuit, it's like you are devaluing the reason people are watching. On the video where the guy talked, where the guy came at me about the, the footage and stuff, it was a video about, I believe it was about the Wii U failing and the Switch succeeding. Um, and in the background of that video, I have Puyo Puyo Tetris being played as, as the video portion of it. I didn't record myself. And um, here's the thing. There's not a single person that tuned into that video because Puyo Puyo Tetris is in the background. They tuned in because they wanted to know why I thought the Wii U failed and why I think the Switch is succeeding. Right. It's got like 6,000 views. It's got that because they wanted to know what I had to say about it. Right. It had nothing to do with the game in the background. So then you must argue, well, what's the point of the game in the background? We're a video game channel. It adds entertainment value. Right. And in this case, it let people know I'm really, really bad at Puyo Puyo. <laughs> <laughs> but, but whatever. I mean, that has some entertainment value in itself. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe how bad you are at right. Puyo Puyo. Ha, right. ha, ha, ha. Yeah, right. By the exactly. way, bro, I agree with you about the Wii U. Yeah. It's like, exactly. They're here yeah. for Wii U, and the video portion is just adding some extra entertainment on top. And, yes, there's other ways to cut videos. I, I, I've done videos where I got my camera, and we do this podcast. We have a green screen. Like, there's, yeah. But here's the thing. I shouldn't be limited in my creativity in that way. By a company saying sorry because you put up a game that you know has really nothing to do with what you're talking about, we're going to take all your revenue from that video, and completely ignoring that none of the content has anything to do with your game. Yeah, um, and and that's kind of and it, yeah, I don't know. this lawsuit I'm hoping goes the right way. I'm hoping um, advertisers come back to YouTube and get their act together and understand that this is a very very different platform than cable tv is and there's a reason cable tv is dying and if these advertisers don't get on board with a place like youtube they're going to find out they're on the outside looking in for ads because there's going to yeah. be advertisers that eventually come along and say look you're dumb why would we ignore billions of people right exactly yeah. there there are more people on youtube than there are wa- watching cable so why would we ignore that audience just because some of them are satanists and some of them are like who cares they're all consumers yep isn't the bottom line making money <laughs> yeah. money money yeah I mean, right. is, isn't that the bottom line? Yeah. Like, why should you care if a Satanist bought your Colgate toothpaste? If you were yeah. a Christian company, who cares? Yeah. Does that mean that doesn't mean you support a Satanist? It means they're just a consumer. Right. You, you, it's, not no like you're, it's, not like it's not like you're going to go to Kmart or Walmart and be like, stand in the aisle, are you Satanist? You can't buy that. You need to go right. buy. Yeah. You need to go buy the competitors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. their money is just as liquid to you as anybody else. Yep. So that that's what I find weird. And I was like, who cares? No one. I've not met one person that associates an ad on a video with the video itself. Um, now, there obviously, you right. guys are going to dig up examples like, oh, there's people. Uh, there are people who have reacted like, oh, yeah. so you're associating with this company. It's like, no, you're just dumb. Yeah. Those are the people you ignore. You you don't listen to the vocal minority. Okay. That's a mistake companies make sometimes. Is too much PCing going on and people listening to the vocal minority. Stop it. Are you making money? Yes. Was that Pepsi ad about join the conversation really, really terrible? Was it completely pointless and stupid? I saw yes. nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it was completely stupid and completely pointless. And it made yeah. lots of memes and jokes for Pepsi. Yes. You know, they give a shit. No. They, the people are still buying their Mountain Dew. They're still buying their Pepsi. Oh, yeah. It's not affecting their bottom line. No. It's just a joke for a week or two, or still yeah. apparently now. Yeah, right. Like, like, it's just, everyone knows it's stupid. Pepsi probably knew it was stupid, but they knew it was stupid in a way that people were going to keep talking about it. Yeah. Like, who cares? Yeah. It's not like they came out and started bashing gay people or whatever. Right. No, they released an ad that clearly does not understand the point of protesting, and that's okay. It doesn't matter. And no, Pepsi doesn't solve everything. You don't hand a Pepsi to a cop, and that solves yeah. everything. Yeah. Everyone, no one's that dumb. Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, some yeah, people, yeah. But whatever. People are that dumb. Like, there were some protest rallies that were throwing Pepsi cans at the <laughs> cops. It's like, okay. I mean, come on now. Right. Free right. advertising. Right. Pepsi yeah. got in the news. Hey. Why not? Any advertising is good advertising, right? Especially if your company's not directly like at fault. The one's causing it, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So like that's the thing. Like I think companies will eventually come back to YouTube once they realize that cable's kind of going down. Um, you know, yeah. There's you, obviously you get high quality ads on things like Hulu. I don't think you're ever going to see ads on Netflix. I know ad companies. I probably knock it on Netflix's door every single day. And yeah. Like, dude, can we get an ad spot? We'll pay you billions. Yeah. And Netflix is like, we already make billions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
We might build this because we're ad free. We're not going to sell out. I hope right. they don't sell out. Right. If the company ever sells, you know, then I it, assume selling out. But the only way I'd, I think I'd be okay with it is if it was like one, maybe two ads at the beginning, and then no. you don't see anything. No, that's what Hulu is. Right. You want that? Go to Hulu. Well, Hulu's, yeah, but, Hulu's got original series, movies, and they have all yeah, the yeah. No, I know. Shows. But which Hulu, by the way, is existing for all you TV companies worried about cable dying. Guess what? If you supported Hulu all these years, you're part of the reason that cable TV is dying. Because like me, I own cable, but yet I still watch most of my shows on Hulu because I don't have time to watch them. And yeah, I right. could DVR them, or I could just turn on Hulu anywhere I want. Yeah. Um, where I don't have to be access to my DVR to, to watch. Um, so, again, I, I people might wonder why I even have cable. It's sports, maybe. Live <laughs> sports. Live right, sports right, are still right. best on cable. So, oh, yeah. Um, eventually, that, that might not be true. NFL has been streaming on Twitter. Um... I don't really weird platform to stream on, right? Uh, but I think Twitch is getting um, in the action. The, too the now. playoff games, I, I believe I can stream all the NBA playoff games online. The NCAA tournament, you can stream that entire thing online for free. You don't even need a subscription anywhere. Um, so it's getting to a point where you can just stream everything. They're still not, you know, they're still streaming's not perfect. You can stream a live show on there, but you watch it on your t- TV, you'll see it's it's like way behind your TV. Um, but. If internet speeds, like if Google Fiber actually makes it around the whole country in the United States, mm-hmm. I think that's when cable companies are done. Right. Oh, because definitely. it'll be instant then. There won't be oh, any delays sure. in your streams. Oh, for sure. Um, and plus, everyone will have whatever quality they want. They have a 720p TV, great. They have an 8K TV, no problem. Right. Like you'll exactly, be able to watch yeah. it any quality you want. Right. Um, anyways, <laughs> getting kind of sidetracked with that conversation. Yeah. But because it affects us too. Um, and in a very small way, because we're a small channel, it affects us. Um, and obviously, as a creator, I always stand on the side that we should have our creator freedom to a point. There, there always should be some sort of limit. I don't know what the limit should be, but to a point, we should always have our creator freedom. And anyone who does reviews should have the ability to do those reviews and monetize those reviews. Um, because whenever a company tries to get involved in the monetization of reviews, it affects the review. Mm-hmm. Whether or not... Um, like if, like there's even people who think, you know, if Nintendo sends me a game, it's going to affect my review score. It, it never has, but it's understandable. Right. Because Definitely. I got something for free. And that's yeah. always a thing. Like when, when I watch Linus Tech Tips, that's always a criticism of theirs. Like, well, of course the review is favorable of all these products. They were sent them for review for free. And some of them they get to keep. So yeah, the, the reviews are going to be favorable. I'm like, that, that it's I, think, a possibility. I think subconsciously that's always true to a point. Like, they, they talk a lot about Corsair products because they get a lot of Corsair products. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a bunch of Corsair products. I've like apparently converted to Corsair with my PC stuff. Um, but the thing is, in using their products, they're really damn good. It's understandable. Like, like my experience with those same products matches their experience. So it's like, I don't, you know, you just get to know the content creators you trust. You know, well, if you want to think, yeah, right. like, this is a shill, fine. You want to think, but, I'm a shill because I got... I didn't even get a copy of Breath of the Wild. I don't. Yeah. The last thing I got was a copy of Triforce Heroes I gave to you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I I have not gotten a free copy of anything from Nintendo in a long time. The yeah. last thing was, man. Well, Triforce Heroes that I gave to you because they didn't give it to me until the day of release, and I'm like, well, this is dumb. I already have the game. Yeah. Right. Um, the last time I actually got a pre-release copy was probably. Wasn't it tw- they didn't give me a previous copy of Twilight Princess HD. Maybe the Wind Waker HD, they might have given me an early copy. Even then, I, I don't think so. The, the last time I remember was, uh, was honestly Skyward Sword. Yeah. And Skyward Sword was in 2011. Yeah. So we're like six years later, and I don't really get early review copies anymore. So, right. Um, that doesn't mean I don't but, want them, Nintendo. Right, get right, on that. Right, right. I would I would love, like, I want to play NBA Playgrounds right now, but I can't afford it. Maybe I should... I should contact the company my MBU playgrounds. Maybe they would give me a review copy. Maybe I don't know if my fo- I don't think our following is big enough. But, yeah, um, I would love to get uh, like I, I if I could save money. I'm a gamer, right? I know gaming is expensive, so if I could save money, I would love to. It's not going to make me like the game anymore, but it's going to make me save right, money. Right. It'll it's, make me feel less guilty that if I buy a game I don't like, but I'm still going to review it negatively if I don't. Right. I mean, somebody could hand you a turd for free. It, it, you're not going to review it favorably. No. I mean, it's... Like, if yeah. you drop off a bag of burning crap on my front exactly. porch... Exactly. I'm going to ask stuff to clean it up, and it's going to be a bad review. Yeah, right, exactly. Of that burning bag of yeah. poop, but whatever. It's I still free. I got it. Who cares, yeah. Yeah. 
I'm still gonna throw it out like the rest of them. Like, and w- like there used to be like w- when they sent physical copies of games. I got a physical copy of Epi- Epic Mickey Two back in the day. I don't know how. I'm working at Zelda Informer, and I got Epic Mickey Two a review copy. Yep. From Disney, I, I I didn't understand why I got it, but it is what it is. They'll take it. <laughs> it was bad. I yeah. sold it. And I feel no shame in saying I sold a free copy of a game I got and made some money off it because that's how crappy it was. I don't even care. And, yes, I shilled it off to GameStop. I don't care. I got, like, 10 bucks for it. Who cares? The game Which sucked. turned around and was probably immediately spent at GameStop anyways. No, but. no, no, no. I think I got lunch that day with that. Oh, okay. so, so I guess if you want to get in a roundabout way, Disney bought lunch for me. One day. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, affected, there you go. Affected, there you go. You didn't make my, money off it of it. It affected just, my review of Epic Mickey 2 because that cocoon yep. food was so good. Yep. It's like, yeah, the, the food was good. The game yep. was not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sending me a free game that make me think it was good or think right, it was right. worth money. Which really upset me because the first Epic Mickey was pretty good. 